Hey, and welcome to the highlights of episode number 145 with Dr. Stephen Cabral. Some of my favorite parts of this episode were when he shares about the importance of emotional health and not just the physical health for preconception, peri and post pregnancy. I also loved when he shares the three foods you must eliminate whilst breastfeeding. And I loved the ideal time to gift yourself for self-love during your postpartum days. But there is so much more wisdom and inspiration that you get in the full episode. He dives deep into everything you need to know during this special time of your life. So to listen to the full podcast and get all the info in the show notes, head on over to melissaambrosini.com forward slash 145 right now. Welcome back, Stephen. I am so excited to have you back on the show for the third time. You are currently the only person who has been on my show three times. So that is worth celebrating. What are some of the things that we can do preconception? You know, what, what are the detoxes we need to do and, and how long do we need? So let's go through everything that in an ideal world and with the right amount of time, like what are the things, what is the checklist that we need to go through? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a great way to break it down. And why don't we do that? There's essentially pre-pregnancy, there's peri or while you are pregnant, and then there's post-pregnancy. And there are really, it's three main parts. And we knew this before just a couple hundred years ago. And it's actually still, if you if you look to a lot of older based cultures that have been around for many thousands of years, they still practice this. But there was essentially three different types of diets and three different types of lifestyles for a woman about to get pregnant and then while she was pregnant and then post-pregnancy. So the role of pre-pregnancy, before you get pregnant, ideally you have six months to a year to originally it was meant to fortify the body. Now that meant, what do we need to do? We needed to build up the blood. We needed to build up the bones, fortify all the essential fatty acids so that you would have all the raw material. Again, I know that I'm breaking this down into very simplistic points, but you would have all the vitamins and minerals that your body needs so that when you are carrying that child, that they're not taking the calcium out of your bones, that they're not literally drawing the omega-3s and essential fatty acids out of the organs and the eyes. I work with a lot of women, they get floaters and they get you know, vision-based issues and they have the joint pain like you talked about. Well, those things can be alleviated ideally with a pre-pregnancy diet that would definitely start three to six months before, so 12 weeks to somewhere, well, you know, somewhere right around the 24-week mark as well. And that's the fortifying. Okay, so what are the exact tests that you would ideally like women to do preconception so that we can find out where we need to go from there? And then let's talk about the diet. Yes. So the three tests that I recommend pre-pregnancy are the hair tissue mineral analysis, because it's an easy at-home test where you can look at your own electrolyte levels. You can look at levels of stress essentially in the body depleted mineral levels to see if you need to really refortify a lot. You can get an idea about thyroid only because you're looking at selenium and other cofactors. But on the hair tissue mineral analysis, you're going to be able to look at aluminum levels. You're going to be able to look at lead. You can look at arsenic. You can look at mercury. And these we know just because there's so much obviously research out there, that these are all neurotoxins. So they affect your nervous system. They affect the nervous system and development of the child. So those though, a lot of people don't run the test because they're afraid of the results. Well, the deal is this though. I would rather have all of the information and then know I can eliminate them and then feel much happier about that. So the elimination of heavy metals is only six weeks. That's all that it is through a natural-based protocol with cilantro, with vitamin C, with crack cell chlorella, and a little biofilm disruptor. Really easy, all natural, easy to do. So here, tissue mineral analysis, that would give you your minerals and the heavy metals organic acid testing, which is an at-home simple urine test to do. That urine test would look at candida overgrowth. It would look at bacterial overgrowth. Again, that'll take 12 weeks to eliminate another six weeks to 12 weeks to then seal up the gut. That's why we want to do six months before. And then we would also then, uh, that would look at all of your vitamins. So your B vitamins, your vitamin C, there's no guesswork. We can look at all of these things. So We can look at your minerals. We can look at now your vitamin levels. We can restore those as needed. And the last one is the omega-3 test. And that's because 
so many women and men as well, but women are the ones carrying on life, right? So we need your omega-3 stores to not only be balanced with your inflammatory omega-6s, but we also need them to be high enough. So I work with a lot of women in my practice. Some are vegan, some are only fish, some are more paleo. And what we need to do is no matter who it is, we need to make sure that even if they're not eating a lot of the omega-6s, that their omega-3 levels are high enough. So those three labs, I consider a must-do. Okay. And what about diet? Let's talk about the type of diet we need for preconception. And this will obviously be different taking into consideration those three tests once you get those results. You know, it's going to be different for everyone. And and if you're having fertility issues, that's going to be different as well. But is there kind of like an umbrella diet or an umbrella approach that is good for everyone preconception? Yeah, and that's actually a really good point that it may change based on the individual. But let's say that you are not you know, running the labs or something like that. Well, you can actually do then a 21 day functional medicine detox and you could do a heavy metal detox if you wanted to go right into it. Those are two different things. One's for the liver and one's to basically chelate and pull the metals out of the body. But no matter whether you're doing the labs or you're doing the detoxes, you want to make sure that you are actually rebalancing the body. Okay. So this is a time and this is, I mean, there's a lot of challenges on women, right? There's challenges with, okay, you're supposed to be taking care of yourself. Now you need to take care of your own body for another you know, life coming into the world. There's a lot to think about, but here's all I need you to do is I want to look at your current state right now, which in Ayurveda, we call that the Vakriti, or right now we call it the phenotype if we're talking about functional medicine. But if you are, let's say, 20 or more pounds overweight, if you're anywhere between your ideal body weight to 20 pounds overweight, not going to make an, a huge difference, okay? But if you're 20 or more pounds overweight, we'll want to lose the weight now so that we decrease inflammatory levels of, well, inflammation in general, cortisol, maybe excessive estrogen, anything imbalanced blood sugar because that's going to affect the child. There can be gestational-based diabetes. So what I want women to do is get in their healthiest state possible. So if you're more than 20 pounds overweight, okay, let's bring it down to somewhere between maybe your ideal weight to 15 pounds or so over. And if you're underweight, I want you to bring your weight up to a healthy weight so that you are not in more of a catabolic state. So we can look at that as creating balance within the body. And no matter where you're at, This will be predominantly plant-based, okay? So it's going to be predominantly low glycemic fruit, berries. It's going to be all sorts of different vegetables because in all the different colors of the vegetables, and I did a show on this as well, is you get certain nutrients and antioxidants and anthocyanins from blue and purple-based vegetables and fruit. You get different ones from red, orange, and yellow, and others from white. So I want you eating a rainbow of colors, but I also want you achieving your ideal body weight. Now is not the time to try to be as lean as possible because that's actually not conducive to a nice, strong, healthy pregnancy as well. Once we fall pregnant, how does the diet shift? What shifts? Can you go into that phase for us? Yeah. So at this point, let's say that you do a 21-day detox before. When you are pregnant, this is not the time to do a detox. It's also not the time. So I just want to give a few contraindications that we talk about you know, all the time. And that's don't get me wrong, like I love herbs and I love herbal supplements and I love all these superfoods and all of that. This is not the time to use those. Herbs are considered medicine, okay? So we don't want to be doing mushroom blends and we don't want to be doing a lot of ashwagandha or high doses of anything, right? Because we're not only affecting now our bodies, which are an adult body, right? So we have a fully formed liver, we have everything. But that unborn child, you know, that that weighs nothing, right? Ounces to then pounds can be greatly affected by that. So what we're doing at this point is we're eating a nutritional plan that's going to be higher in the omega-3s. It's going to be higher in all of your B vitamins, such as your folate and your B12 and all of those. Now, of course, I do recommend before getting pregnant that you do use at least a good high quality prenatal vitamin that does not contain folic acid. It needs to contain something called methylfolate or 5-MTHF or something called nature folate. Also, at least by the third trimester, you're going to want to increase your iron-based foods, okay? Your spinach, your dark leafy greens. If you do eat meat, you will include some meat as well, especially those last 90 days when your blood volume is increasing 
and most women become anemic, okay? Those, even if it's just functionally based anemic, they get lower energy. You know, again, you're creating so much more blood volume that we need that iron. Very, very important for you and the baby, but m- mainly for you. Remember, you're, you're just as important. We don't want to just think about the baby. And then also your omega-3. We want that going the entire pregnancy, but for sure the last trimester as well to help with neurological development of the child. So for someone who sees on the TV, okay, I'm pregnant, I've got to go and take folic acid, and they go to the pharmacy and they pick up one off the counter and they start taking that, this is a big no-no. It is only because the research is much better now. And although, yes, it's always been a no-no, it's like, it's one of those things that you have to understand is that we have to stay on the cutting edge. We never want to adopt something that puts anyone as the guinea pig, right? We don't want that. We know that that women need larger amounts of folic acid only because the child needs larger amounts of folic acid for neural tube development and all sorts of different biological and growth-based milestones that we're trying to hit. That's absolutely essential. So we need folic acid, right? But ideally, we want it in the form that is not as toxic to women. Is it better than nothing? Yes, we must have it. However, since a lot of people listening to this podcast will have the ability to choose, it might cost like 25 cents more a day for a functional medicine prenatal, then I recommend going with that. Yes. Awesome. Okay. What other supplements would you ideally like women to be taking during those nine months? I really like a daily probiotic because I, what we know now is that if we can keep candida to a lower level in the gut, so that's why, again, I like running the organic acids test just to make sure there's no candida overgrowth because candida can actually get passed on to the child and it can get passed on two ways, actually while pregnant and then in the birth canal as well when you're delivering. So that's important to look at. The daily probiotic support is something obviously I stand by because it's more of a small intestinal-based one. The clean gut probiotic is one that helps push out a little bit of candida. I don't like to give those recommendations specifically, though, unless I know what we're working with. But a good overall probiotic is great for good overall immune health. So that's very, very important. And then the other one is very difficult. So, you know, you and I both work in health communities where people are very health conscious and a lot of people are trying to eat more of a vegan based diet. And I understand that veganism is an entire lifestyle, but one of the hard things to do is get up a lot of omega-3s through LG or seaweed base. Just like it's hard to get a lot of the omega-3s through tuna, swordfish, Chilean sea bass, or like bluefish, because they're higher in mercury. So when we're eating a lot of these LGs or you know, spirulina, they can actually soak up a lot of heavy metals. So I'm not recommending those during pregnancy. I'm recommending more of these smaller fish, such as the sardines and mackerel, and maybe some trout. And I'm recommending wild salmon, which is a vegetarian fish that doesn't eat other fish, so it's, it doesn't accumulate the same amount of mercury. So a couple times a week, I certainly do recommend that. Or I recommend a functional medicine omega-3, at least during the last trimester, to get omega-3 levels up. We all know the effect that stress has on our body and our immune system and how detrimental it can be, especially whilst we're trying to create another human. So can you just speak to that a little bit? Absolutely. And I do believe that this begins pre-pregnancy as well. As you're thinking about having a child and you're thinking about becoming pregnant, ideally, I mean, we don't always get to choose this, but it is nice to say, okay, here's where I want to be. Because the higher stress you are, they've, there's really great data on this, really great research. The more cortisol, which essentially just think about the more stress you have in your body, it actually affects the overall health of the child. It can affect it in terms of IQ, learning, like all sorts of different things. Now, again, I'm a huge believer that you're always doing your best and you're always going to do your best. You can't worry about all of these things because it only adds more stress. But what I recommend is this. I want you to try to get to the point in your life where you're able to, to the best of your ability, to say, this is nine months, 40 weeks or so of my life. And for these 40 weeks, for this essentially nine months or so, I'm going to dedicate myself for me and for my child to becoming 
and having as lower stress lifestyle as I can, to not over exercising or under exercising, to not overeating, because there, we see that a lot, right? When a lot of women get pregnant and they tend to eat more than I believe they even need to. And I don't like to see that because a couple of reasons. One is I don't like to see that because I don't think that it's great in terms of spiking insulin. So that affects the child as well. But also, they can sometimes gain more weight than they need to, which makes the pregnancy more difficult because of gestational diabetes or joint pain or lower back pain, other many, many things that can happen, but then also pokes pregnancy as well. So what I want there to do is, is really get into this as like, this is one of the greatest experiences that you'll ever go through and to really enjoy it as much as possible. So I'm not sure if that's the answer that you're looking for, but you do need to prepare for it. And then you have to understand that it's it's a particular phase in your life that actually will go by faster than you think. And honestly, for probably for that first 12 weeks, you may have some morning sickness, which by the way, can last all day and could be any part of the day. It could be evening sickness. But what you want to look at is that it may not change. You might not change a lot of you for the first 12 weeks. So your body may not feel different in terms of the things that you can do for that first 12 weeks. So what we're really looking at is understanding you still are pregnant and what you do does matter during that time. So how does the supplementation and the diet shift once we've had the baby? So I think, and I really believe that a lot of people in your community, I know for sure, you know, they're really into their health and, and really intelligent when it comes to what to shop for and all of those. But where I see a lot of people miss the mark is post-pregnancy, postpartum. And the reason is, and it's understandable, overwhelmed for sure, right? You're bringing a new life in this world. You might not be getting as much sleep. Of course, you're not getting as much sleep. And you know, there's a lot of demands on your time. It's no longer even just about you. There's another child and you might already have one child or two children, three children, whatever it might be. So there's a lot of demands. But the problem is, I see too many women then neglect their own body. And their body then starts to go into more of a catabolic phase. And that means they're actually really breaking down at a much greater rate. There's more free radical damage. We start to see darker spots on the face. We start to get eye floaters. The hair starts to thin. The nails don't grow as fast. We get white spots in the nails. We really see the body becoming demineralized. Now, that's going to happen a little bit anyways during pregnancy. We've known this for thousands of years, which is why typically women waited between somewhere between 18 months and you know two years to have their next child. So they would actually take that time to refortify. But we can talk about that. But it begins right after you deliver. Because at that time, you need to begin cleansing the body. Cleansing the body is actually different than detoxing. When we talk about detoxing, we're talking about getting the liver to detoxify plastics and heavy metals and you know anything that could be the bisphenol A that's from plastic, like any one of those things. But afterwards, we're talking about getting the body a lot of green juices or carrot juice, anything very hydrating, anything that will flush the system of all the excess water weight, inflammation, just really moving it all through the body. And this is also a time now to not do anything extra because you are going, like let's say you're a woman who also decides to nurse your child. Now you're going to be expending more energy and you're going to be using more nutrients from your own body to create this life-giving milk. And so what we need to do is really save all energy for you and for your child. So at this point, exercise is really for three to four weeks at the minimum is just really walking or taking care of your child, doing some lymphatic-based massage, but nothing too strong or strenuous because we don't want to move that too quickly, which could affect then your milk supply. So other things I have to mention, because I, I see this quite often, is that your diet may have to change. And that's because what you eat now is affecting your milk and it's going to affect the digestion potentially of your child. So let's say someone that you're someone that just believes in dairy products and all that. Well, the number one thing that I see that causes skin issues in, in infants and nursing infants and children is dairy, eggs. And then I also see if a child has a lot of gas, cruciferous based vegetables. So, so many of us like to eat broccoli and we like to eat things that are very healthy for us, that are healthy in general for humans. Well, those same things, though, may cause digestive distress in your child. So we want to just think about that ahead of time. Keep eating the healthy foods. But if you see that, think about it as something that you are most likely eating that can be causing the issue. Mm, given birth, 
this is our time to really bond with this baby and to not be running back to high intensity workouts and not over committing and not going back to work straight away. So how long ideally in a dream scenario would you suggest for that time for that mother? Is is it three months? I would recommend three months. And that's because the first month is literally going to fly by in like a blink. Now, it may not seem that way at the time every single day when you might be nursing every three hours and your child might be waking through the night. Um, it may not seem that way. However, your body just went through you know, one of those miracles of life and it's completely changed, like literally completely changed overnight. And now you have to adapt to that as well while waiting on a child that is literally dependent on you for everything. And so here's what I do recommend. And again, I obviously have never been through this myself. It's one of those things that you know men will never be able to experience. So all I can do is look from it from an outsider, one as a clinician, but the other as a husband. And one thing I have to recommend though is that you do want to get your body back as healthy as fast as possible. And by healthy, I mean more fortified, removing the excess weight if there is any, because women will naturally lose a lot of that weight over the first 30 days from delivery. And then also from all of the, you actually require an enormous amount of energy while nursing and while taking care of that child. So that may happen naturally. But there's something that I do recommend, and this is very important, and a lot of women will overlook it. You need about, again, this will vary for person to person, 30 to 90 minutes away of your own time one to two times a day. It's so important. Women that cannot get out of the house just for a moment to change environments, to be able to take a shower, to really feel refreshed, have a difficult time because it is literally then one 24-hour day just blends into the next one and the next one. So if you're able to, your mom, a mother-in-law, your husband, a nanny, anyone that can help you to be able to get some of your own time away from your child. It doesn't mean you don't love your child. Of course you do, but you'll be better for that child if you go out and you do some exercise, you go for a walk, you breathe some fresh air, anything. And again, you can push your child outside. There's no doubt about that, but you just need some of your own time, especially that first 30 days. So I can't recommend that enough. What about supplementation during this period? This is still a continuation if you are nursing the child. This is a continuation of the pregnancy-based supplements. We're still going with the either just the what we use, the daily nutritional support powder, but again, you can just use a prenatal if you'd like that's functional medicine-based. You don't need the extra folate now, but you still need your daily multivitamin and mineral and all that. You can still go with your probiotic and you can definitely still use your omega-3. Amazing research amazing research with nursing with higher levels of omega-3 and the addition of IQ, meaning that children who have higher levels of omega-3 through their mother from nursing actually had higher levels of IQ. So this is important. Again, this has to do with neurological development, has to do with brain development. Your brain's 90% fat, so it makes sense. But this is also not a time to do a detox yet, not while you're nursing, because remember, your blood is also a constituent of your milk. So very, very important that we're not doing heavy metal detox, we're not doing a candida detox, any type of detox, okay? This is not the time. Now, you can do fresh pressed juices. That's okay. That's not a detox. That's more cleansing-based, right? More hydration-based, more moving the lymphatic system. But we can't use the heavy herbs right now, and we don't want to use the higher levels of vitamins as well either because you are still supplying nutrition to your child this time, though, just in a different way, right? So we have to look at it as the same thing. And then when you're done nursing your child or you're weaning your child off to mainly whole foods, then that is the time we're going to eventually do that functional medicine detox again. And we're going to then ramp back up vitamins and minerals. We might use an activated B complex. We're definitely using the probiotic the whole time either way. And whatever we need to fortify at that time, that's when we can use lab testing again to see if there's anything low. But while nursing, still be careful of using a lot of the herbal-based supplements, which could get into your milk. Mm -hmm. 
You spoke about getting back to as healthy and your pre-pregnancy weight as quickly as possible. How do we do that? So for most women, they're going to gain somewhere between 18 pounds and 36 pounds over their current weight. Some women gain gain a little bit more. Not too many women gain less than that, okay? Because that's kind of what we call just the healthy minimum. And again, of course, it differs because what if you started at 100 pounds and what if another woman started 180 pounds? Obviously, it's very, very different. But we can look at it as somewhere within that range. So let's say after you give birth, you lost 15 of those 35 pounds, we'll say. Okay, so now we still have 20 pounds left to go. I would say easily within the next two to three weeks, you very likely may lose half of that 15 pounds as well. So when we're looking at this now, a lot of women are somewhere between 10 and 15 pounds. That's what I've seen over thousands and thousands of appointments, that a lot of women have an extra 10 to 15 pounds that are trying to do the healthiest thing for their body, but they're still about 10 pounds to 15 pounds heavier. Okay, at this point, again, you know that we're not going to be over-exercising, especially since, remember, over-exercising actually changes the milk supply. It can start to decrease the milk supply, which we certainly don't want. So we're going to exercise, but not until four to six weeks. For the first four weeks, what we're simply going to do is go for walks. We're going to do some self-massage with sesame oil or coconut oil. We're going to kind of move that lymphatic system to work on drainage as well. And we're going to absolutely be getting more of that plant-based diet. We use something, a greens powder, the daily fruit and vegetable blend. You can choose whatever you'd like. That allows you to get more of those greens in without eating maybe as much of those raw greens that may affect the digestion of your baby. So that's one thing we do. We definitely make sure the protein is still up. We make sure your carbs are still up. Very, very important that you don't also go on a low-carb diet after pregnancy, which a lot of women do to lose the weight. Why? A lower-carb diet can actually shut down the milk supply because it believes that you're in more of a survival-based space. So we need good fresh fruit in the diet. You can do frozen berries. That's okay. Just try to choose organic if possible. If you can't always buy all organic, I know that it's more expensive. Always buy the Dirty Dozen organic, and you can look up Dirty Dozen Clean 15. You'll find the list. And the Clean 15, if you can't buy all organic, those ones are okay to buy non-organic, although I still don't recommend it, but it's okay. And you'll just give those a wash. You can use a little apple cider vinegar and a little water to soak those. So we're going to get those fresh fruits and produce there. And then we'll add maybe a little bit of sweet potato at lunch. That will give you your healthy starches. Maybe you just do the veggies and some protein and healthy fat at dinner. That's going to help you start to lose the weight. Then after the six weeks is up, that's when we can start getting back to the gym. We can do resistance training maybe twice a week. But again, don't dive back into it right away because you're not going to have the same reserves left. You're probably not going to have the the sleep that you want to be getting. So just do one to two sets of each exercise. See how your body feels. Don't create too much lactic acid, which is waste. And then you can do a little bit more as you progress. So that's what I recommend in a nutshell. Obviously, the mother's body needs to fully recover and rebuild. In a dream scenario, ideal world, you know, how many years would you recommend between children so that the mother's body has enough time to fully heal and rebuild all of her stores to do it all over again? What I've always seen, and again, this I have to go by not recent data, but data throughout history and what's always been kind of conveyed through tribes and cultures. And it's always been two to three years. So the two years would allow you enough time to fully nurse your first child through that first year. And then obviously weaning towards the second year. And again, a lot of women won't won't nurse past a year. And I think that that's totally acceptable and, and fine. So you are getting then essentially a full year to rebuild that body back up before you try to become pregnant again. And again, my recommendation is that you're going to then start the process again. You're actually going to eliminate anything that you may have accumulated. You're going to run the hair tissue mineral analysis, the organic acids test, the omega-3, see very specifically for your body, not your friend's body, not your neighbor's body, anything. What do you need for your body? Rebuild those over a period of 12 weeks to six months. And then your body is now fully fortified. There's no guesswork. And you can have your next healthy pregnancy. 